Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be taking a look at some sequential containers that are part of the C++ standard library. So let's go ahead and check that out. So we'll go ahead and open up our example, which is this sequential container.cpp. And what we're going to be looking at, even though we're not going to implement all of these because some of them are kind of repetitive, are uh, vectors, lists, forward lists, strings, arrays, uh, and dq. Right, so um, we're already a little bit familiar with vectors and strings, um, and also arrays uh, to some extent, but we'll go ahead and formalize some of this um, a little more here. All right, so we're going to use this uh, templated uh, function right here to just print out the container. And like we said, these are sequential containers, right? So they store things sequentially so we can print them out um, fairly easily with this templated function. So we'll start out with arrays, right? So why do we care about arrays or why do we use arrays? Now, arrays are just fixed size containers. Uh, so if we know exactly the size of the data we're going to be working with, uh, arrays are pretty useful. So we specify something like a type and a size. For all of these, we'll use very simple types uh, like ints. Uh, so here we'll create an array that just has 10 elements and we'll store it, you know, or and we'll go ahead and use this kind of initialization. So we'll initialize it with some numbers. But the nice thing about arrays compared to just the raw, you know, arrays that we're used to in say C, is that we can still use things like uh, from the algorithm part of the standard library, we can still do things like sorting, right? So we'll go ahead and call sort on uh, the iterators int uh, array begin and int array end, right? And this will give us, uh, after we use print container before and after, it'll give us a sorted of version of this array. Now, in a lot of times uh, in C++, uh, one of the nice things we can do is have flexible, uh, flexible arrays, which are what vectors are. Right, so uh, so strings are similar to vectors. They're really just a special type of vectors for storing characters uh, and working with characters. Uh, so we're not going to talk about strings that much, especially since we've already covered in another video. And we'll just briefly cover uh, uh, vectors and some nice things about them. So uh, what's nice about a vector? So vectors like, um, like arrays, they've got fast random access. So if we're accessing a random element, that's fast. Um, but adding elements to a position other than at the back may be slow, right? So you may be familiar with, uh, if we add elements to a vector, we use this pushback operation. So this adds an element to the end of the vector, right? So this uh, this is fairly fast, but if we're adding an element at another position, that can be slow. So um, vectors are something that we typically use uh, very generally, or rather it's uh, if we don't have a very specific reason to use another data structure, a lot of times we'll just use um, a vector because of this fast random access. So uh, with this example, what we'll do is we'll just, you know, initialize the vector with a couple of squares, right? So one, a zero squared, one squared, two squared, all the way to nine squared. And then we'll just show off, you know, uh, some deletion as well. So using pop back. Um, the next thing though, that we're going to talk about is forward lists and lists. Now, what we've talked about so far is basically just you know vectors right or you know array like things so either it's an array that stores some elements you know zero one two three whether it's fixed size or it's something that we can expand and add say four uh, we talked about strings for a bit which is this except for you know instead of this it's going to be you know a b c you know etc um, and we talked about you know why we use these type of things but you know Moving on to something that you know, might be new to you, um, if you're not familiar with data structures, is the idea of lists and forward lists. Now, forward lists and lists, um, here again, we're also just going to specify a type, just like with vector. But um, the nice thing about lists is that there's um, a fast insert and delete at any part of the list. So uh, when we're talking about a list or a forward list, what we're really talking about is something that's known as a singly linked list or a doubly linked list. So in a singly linked list, we'll have you know nodes, right, and they'll be connected uh, via pointers to get, uh, to each other. So we'll have say one, two, and three, right, and so one has a pointer to two, two has a pointer to three. So we can just traverse the list by looking at each node. Now with the doubly linked list, it's a little more expensive, but that's because we can traverse in either direction. So we have pointers going you know to every nodes. So in a forward list, we can only traverse in the forward direction. In a doubly linked list, we can traverse in either direction. So backwards, uh, so back to front or front to back. 
right? And so a, a forward list is a singly linked list, so you can only traverse it forward, but still has this fast insert delete. Um, a doubly linked list, or just known as a list in C++, you can traverse in either direction. So in this case, we'll just go, go ahead and show off the list um, because it has more features. Uh, so here, we'll just make a list. We'll push five elements on, and then we'll just add some elements at different parts of the list. So we'll add it. Um, at first, we'll just, you know, say we'll use the auto type and we'll just say, you know, look at the iterator uh, to the beginning of the list. And we'll go ahead and insert in five, it's five and six into that spot. Now it's important to know, right, when we're inserting here, right, and th uh, this is going to be our list beginning, we're adding a new element, you know, let's say we're adding four, so four will take its place, uh, but that doesn't mean the beginning is now pointing. Uh, so that means that if we want to get this iterator to be in uh, four now, we'd have to set that iter right here equal to int underscore list again, because right now that iterator is still pointing to one. So what we'll see is we'll have four, say, put in here, and then again, we'll have, you know, right there, we'll end up putting in five. Uh, and then over here, we move that um, iterator over to the new beginning of the list, and we'll input an element at the very front of the list. And then we'll show off the fact that of why you know lists are useful sometimes when we need to iterate um, the opposite direction, so back to front. And so we actually can get the iterator, um, an iterator going back to front from R begin, so that's reverse begin, and then all the way to reverse end. Uh, and this will just print out this uh, this doubly linked list right in reverse order. Now the last thing uh, that we'll go ahead and talk about are uh, doubly ended queues, right? So why would we ever want a doubly ended queue? Or what's the nice thing about a doubly ended queue? Right, so similar to uh, a lot of these things, all we need to do is specify a type that this uh, data structure is going to store. Um, so in this case, it has fast random access. Uh, but the nice thing is, is that uh, there's a fast insert at delete um, at the front or the back. So you can think of this as, you know, a queue like structure. Right, so we'll have some numbers in here, three, four, five, six, seven. And what this is saying is I can add numbers at either side, and then I can also get rid of numbers at either side, and that's a fast operation. Now, like all these things, there's always a trade-off, so it might be expensive, like with vectors or arrays, to find some element or remove some element in the middle of the structure, right, in the middle of this DQ. However, you know, you know, in some cases we really only care, uh, or we, we're, we're specifically choosing a DQ because you know what we're doing is mainly adding things or removing things from the edges. So sometimes you know we don't care about uh, if it's a slow access time to the middle of a DQ, right? And so what we'll do here is we'll just push back some elements. So this is just adding some at the end of the queue, adding some elements, and then we'll go ahead and push some elements to the front of the queue, right? And we can also remove using pop front or pop back as well. All right. Um, so that's going to go ahead and do it for these examples. Let's see what this looks like actually printed out. So let's go ahead and do um, G plus plus dash O, or let's set the standard equal to C plus plus 11. Uh, then we'll do sequential container dot CPP and our output we'll just call sequential containers. Right, so what happens here? Right, so for the array, we've just have 10 elements, right? And all we just show off is storing those 10 elements and then also uh, just sorting those 10 elements. So just some, some better things than uh, we can do with a normal raw array um, because we can use the algorithm using uh, iterators. Now with vectors, we, we see that um, we get more flexibility because we can, we can resize them. So here we push back 10 elements and then we also uh, use a pop back uh, in order to get rid of the last three elements. Now with lists, we see that we can add elements, right? So here we're adding elements at the very beginning of the list. So here, right? So zero, one, two, three, four is our original list. And then we add at the very beginning five, right? And then we're adding basically at whatever the zero index is because that's where iterate, uh, iter is actually pointing, right? That iterator. Right, so then we replace uh, this first item with you know, five, and then we replace this zero again with six, right? And so zero moves over, and then we reset it to be um, 
pointing to the beginning of this list, right? So we put seven there. And then we show that using reverse iterators that we can do with uh, doubly linked lists or the known as list in C++, uh, we can do something we can't do with the forward list, which is go the opposite direction. So we print out four, three, two, one, zero, six, five, seven, right? With a reverse iterator. And then we show that with DQ, right? We can add some elements not only at the end, right, using push back, but we can also use that uh, push front in order to push seven, six, and five to the beginning of this queue, right? And we can also remove um, elements from either side of this. But it's important that we know that we don't have to implement doubly linked lists or singly linked lists all the time. Uh, in C++, there might be a situation where we can implement one faster, uh, but that doesn't mean that, you know, we should, um, or, or that doesn't mean that we always have to. Sometimes we can just get away with using the standard library. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. As always, feel free to check out all my stuff at github.com slash coffee before arch. So we looked at C++ Crash Course, right? And we looked at um, the standard library. And we've got sequential containers. So feel free to check out you know, any of these examples online, as well as any of the other series like CUDA programming, uh, which is NVIDIA GPU programming, as well as any of the other stuff on data structures or parallel programming in C++. But I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.